let's look at how moisture content can affect our product. One of those things is coated products versus non-coated products. And when I say coated, I'm talking about finishes, lacquers, paints, things like that. A finished product is gonna move at a much slower rate or change moisture content much slower than an unfinished product. The amount of surface area of that finished product also has a lot to do, or, or a lot to do with the actual changing of that moisture content of that EMC. Because wood is moving, or moisture is moving in and out of that material, balance is also key when finishing, having coating or not coating on this material. So a product that is only finished on one side means that we've stopped or restricted flow of moisture on one side of that material, but on the opposite side, we have not restricted. So it's basically or essentially saying we have coating on one side, uncoating on the other, so moisture is gonna travel at different rates on one side versus the other side. The same thing applies to veneer and or laminates. If we veneer one side of a panel and not the other side, what we are creating is what is known as an unbalanced panel. That unbalance is gonna create warping, cupping, and bowing. So by not finishing or not applying a veneer or laminate on one side is gonna to lead to very, very big problems within that panel. So it's always important, whether finishing or applying a coating or applying a veneer or applying a laminate, that we coat or we apply a, a veneer to both sides. The same thing as with a finish. What are some problems that can happen if we don't have the correct moisture content when we actually go into the machining process? Well, one of those, if we have too high of moisture content, when we actually machine our product, it can actually create a fuzziness where those wood fibers actually start to release and we get a very fuzzy product. That's with too high of moisture content. If we have too low of moisture content or below our 6%, what can actually happen is we get tear out and chip out of our product and after that product is machined, we can have cracking or, or um, checking that happens. So regardless of whether too high or too low, we have things that are not satisfactory um, to our end product. One of the first things that we need to understand that people have problems understanding is that problems with incorrect moisture content can affect, can and will affect the overall size of our material. How much do they affect the size of our material? Well, before we get into that, we need to understand that wood is going to move differently, whether it be width, whether it be thickness, whether it be length. So we look at wood in several different, or have different faces of wood. So let's use the example of a plain sawn board. So in this plain sawn board, we look at three faces. So the face that is parallel with the grain is what's known as the tangential. The face that is perpendicular to the grains is known as the radial. And the face, or looking at the ingrain or, or with the, or the length of that is known as the transverse. Wood moves very minimally in the lengthwise or longitudinal or transverse direction. So that's typically not a concern for most projects or most products is the overall length. In both width and thickness, it can be very, very detrimental depending on the type of material. The movement tangentially versus radially can and will differ. Typically, the tangential movement is 1.5 to three times the difference of radial. What affects that, that 1.5 to three, um, three times difference? Well, the biggest thing is the overall density of that material. So a material that is much denser is gonna have much more movement than a material that is, that is more porous. So example, balsa wood is gonna move significantly less than a very dense material such as teak or hard maple. Regardless, both of these are going to move. Now this tangentially is gonna move significantly more than radially. How much can tangentially, or that tangential face actually move? Well, a change of 4% moisture content, whether it be plus or minus, can move 1%. 1% doesn't seem like that much in a change. But let's put it in a little different terms. 1% movement in a 12 inch wide board transfers to nearly one eighth of an inch difference. 
So that means a 12 inch wide board that has a change in moisture of 4% can actually change in size 1 8 of an inch. So that's a significant amount of change. So what are some problems that can happen now that we understand that wood can move in this, this dramatic or this dramatically, what are some things that can happen? Well, tangentially, we know that wood is gonna, is gonna move way more than wood in the longitudinal direction. So, gluing up boards that are perpendicular to each other is going to do nothing but create problems. We know that wood is going to move significantly more this way than this way. So if we have a, a significant moisture change, the, this joint between these two materials is going to crack or separate over time. Another problem that can arise is here we have three plain sawn boards that are glued together. So understanding this, or understanding how wood moves, we know that it's going to move significantly more in this direction than it will in this direction. But the fact that all of these are equal as far as their grain orientation, that they're going to move consistently together. But if we were to change that and go from a plain sawn, three plain sawn boards, to three boards that have a variation of grain, such as a plain sawn board, a quarter sawn board, or where the grain direction is running up and down, to back to a plain sawn board, these two boards are gonna be moving significantly more in width, where this board is gonna move significantly more in thickness. What problems can that lead to? Well, over time, especially with a, a, a large change in moisture, this center board can either grow or shrink at a different rate than the two boards that it's attached to, therefore causing um, a, a large separation at the glue joints. Another problem that can arise is that when we're actually gluing a solid wood to a panel product, we can easily glue solid woods to panel products, but if we don't allow those two products to reach the ENC or an equilibrium moisture content in the facility in which they're being processed, they're going to move at different rates. So it's very important that we let both those products achieve their ENC before we start to machine or actually produce a product. Another thing that can actually happen is in joinery. Let's take, for instance, this miter joint. As we know, wood moves very minimally in the length, but significantly more in the width and the thickness. So this miter joint, if this, if this wood to, were to gain moisture, what will happen is the actual joint will separate towards the end of that board causing a gap. If this, if this joint were to lose moisture, it's going to separate, causing a gap on the inside of the joint. Regardless of whether it gains or loses moisture, a significant increase and or decrease is still going to cause a joint that is, that is unsatisfactory. Other complications that it can occur is when we're actually gluing boards together. If we glue boards together that have a moisture content that is too low, that wood will actually absorb a majority of that moisture out of that adhesive prior to clamping. In doing so, what we actually, achieve, or what can actually happen is we are creating a joint that is very weak or has the possibility of failing at a later date. Another area that incorrect moisture content can affect is in the application of, of coatings, especially that of water-based coatings. Moisture content that is too high can affect the bonding or the adhesion of that finish to that product. Moisture content that is too low can actually speed up or increase the drying time um, so much that it actually affects the overall quality of that finish. Regardless of the type of finish that you use, significant changes in moisture content or moisture content or moisture content that is too high or too low can create severe problems in the overall quality and finished product that you are trying to achieve. One particular note to keep in mind, a finished product that has increased significantly in moisture content and then decreases back to the desired moisture content or runs a great risk of having defects or, or problems arising from that change in moisture content. Significant changes of a finished product rarely happen without having some defects happen within that product. Before I sign off, let me leave you with one solid bit of advice. Spotting any potential moisture problems and being able to avoid those problems is key in your success in any project that you may be doing with wood. On behalf of Wagner Moisture Meters, I'm Charlie Phillips.